In this video, we're going to be working out two circular motion problems, one with a carousel swing and then one with a rotor ride. In the first one, we have a radius of 12 meters, a passenger of 50 kilograms. The swing is leaned out at an angle of 30 degrees, and we're going to solve for the velocity that it's traveling around. First of all, you're going to want to analyze the forces acting on it. So let's go ahead and redraw the picture so we have a little bit more space. We have the swing hanging out this way. And we have a force of gravity pulling the person down. And we have the force of tension pulling at a 30 degree angle. Just like we normally would, if we have an angled component, we wanna break it up into an X and Y component. So we'll call this upward component TY for tension in the Y direction. And then we'll call this component tension in the X direction. Now, if you take a look at each of the forces, you can see that there's only two vertical forces, TY and FG. So if you wanted to sum up the forces in the Y direction, we would say the sum of the forces in the Y direction is TY minus FG. And that definitely equals zero because there's no vertical movement or acceleration. So TY basically equals FG. That's going to be a big component in solving the problem because we know force of gravity is mass times 9.8. So if we know the mass is 50 kilograms times 9.8, then we know our TY value. Our TY value is going to be 490 newtons. Now, why is that significant? Because we didn't have any part of this triangle. We didn't have the TX, TY, or the FT. And once you have one angle and one part of the triangle, then you can go ahead and use some trig to solve for the other parts of the triangle. Now, if I'm looking for a velocity and it's a circular motion problem, I'm thinking I want to find the velocity one of two ways. I want to use either 2 pi r over t, which is basically a distance over time calculation where two pi r is the circum circumference of the circle and then capital T is the period, the amount of time it takes to complete that circle. Uh, if I'm taking a look at my values, I do not have any t value, but I do have an r, so it doesn't look like I can solve for the velocity that way. So the second way I'm gonna look to is using a centripetal acceleration type calculation because centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Now, if I'm taking a look at these forces, the only force I have that's centripetal is Tx. Okay? Tx is the part that's directed towards the center of the circle. So only forces that are directed right towards the center of the circle are considered centripetal. So my net force and my centripetal force is Tx. So we, that means Tx equals mv squared over R because the sum of all our forces equals M times A and then the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So we got rid of that A and replaced it with V squared over R. Now, if I used a, a little bit of trig, then I can go ahead and find the X component there. So I can say that the tangent of 30 degrees, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is my TY and my adjacent is Tx. And then we can go ahead and cross multiply those two. And 490 divided by tangent of 30 degrees is going to give us the x component. Eight hundred and forty eight point seven one newtons. Now from there, if I know 848.71 newtons is equal to this side, I know the mass is 50 kilograms from the original values of the problem. 
I'm looking for V squared and I do have my radius of 12 meters. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cross multiply these, which is 848.71 times 12 divided by 50. And then I'm gonna finish off by doing a square root of that entire value because it's V squared. And then once I solve for that velocity, the velocity comes out to 14.27 meters per second. Okay, so our key components of this problem are we want to make sure that we draw a nice force diagram so that we can analyze each of the forces in the X and Y direction. In the Y direction, our FG is going to be helpful because that's <clears throat> easy to solve for as long as we have the mass, and that gives us part of the triangle. Once you have part of the triangle, then if we wanted to solve for the force of tension, we could because it's the hypotenuse of the triangle but we want to use that Tx, which is that centripetal force, that force that's pointing towards the center of our circle. If you looked at it up here, it would be pointing in this direction, which is the center of our circle. And then we use a little bit of trig to find that Tx, and then that Tx equals mv squared over r. We're able to do a little bit of algebra, shift some things around, and we got a velocity of 14.27 meters per second. Now, taking a look at our next problem, we have a rotor ride where as it spins around and gains velocity, the person is gonna sort of stick to the wall and then they're gonna be slightly off the ground a little bit and then that force of static friction is gonna keep them from sliding down. So the force of static friction has gotta be pointing this way to keep them from sliding down the wall as the force of gravity is pushing them down, excuse me, pulling them down. And then as the wall is pushing against their back, we have a normal force against their back pushing towards the center of the circle. Now, with that being said, <clears throat> we have a few different things we know. We know something similar to what we did last time, which is if we take a look at those vertical forces, the forces in the y direction, we have force of static friction minus Fg equals zero, which means these two are equal to one another. So Fg is 40 times 9.8, which is 392 Newtons. And that equals the force of static friction. Now in the X direction, we just have the normal force. The normal force is gonna be our centripetal force because it's the only force pointing towards the center of the circle. So that's gonna be our net force that is in the centripetal direction. So that's equal to mv squared over r. Now we're trying to find this radius right here, but I don't seem to have a lot of information here. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down a little bit more because I know when it comes to friction, that includes the normal force. And a little hint I have is I have the coefficient of static friction here. So 392 newtons equals 0 0.4 times Fn. It always equals mu times Fn, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And then I can go ahead and do a quick calculation to solve for my normal force. And that comes out to 980 Newtons. So now I know my centripetal force is 980 Newtons. We have a mass of 40 from the original problem. And then that still leaves us with too many unknowns. So what I wanna do is I wanna use this substitution right here. So velocity equals two pi r over t. So I'm squaring it, which is gonna make it slightly more complicated. So if I'm squaring everything, up from 2 pi r, 2 squared is 4. Pi is squared, r is squared, and then because it's divided by t, the t squared is going to drop down here. And then we still have this r, that's from the original part of the mv squared over r, so one of these r's is then going to cancel out. Okay, so now I'm able to complete the problem because I know that t 
equals three seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this with a nine because three squared equals nine. All right, so what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to do a little bit more cross multiplication. I'm going to take the nine, cross it up and over, and then do 980 times nine. And then I'm going to take the product of all of these 40 times four times pi squared and then put that in the denominator to divide it. And then I am left with just this radius over here. And then my radius comes out to be 4.47 meters. So the key components for this problem are one, recognizing your vertical forces, which is your force of static friction minus your FG equaling zero because there's no vertical movement or acceleration. And then that way we found the static friction. And then your force of friction is always connected to the normal force because the force of friction is equal to mu, which was 0.4 times the normal force. And when we found that normal force, that was a big factor in helping us solve for it because this normal force is this one over here. And the normal force is pointing towards the center of the circle. So it is a centripetal force. It is the net force of the problem. So that's equal to mb squared over r. It looks like it was a little tough to go ahead and find that r value with all those things missing. So we took that velocity and substituted 2 pi r over t. We made sure we squared all those values, did a little bit of um, algebra, move some of our variables around by doing some cross multiplication. And then we got a final radius of our ride, which is 4.47 meters. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze and solve a carousel swing and rotor ride problem. Thank you for watching and listening.